All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about my new bicycle. Well, it was new at some point. Uh, the SL6 Tarmac, new from Specialized. Um, it's a 2018 bike, which means we got it, uh, I got the bike in November-ish. So I've had uh, plenty of time to get some miles on it, and I wanna say I'm probably close to a couple thousand miles. Um, this video, is not going to be a montage of cutscenes and really fancy pan shots of the bike. There's plenty of those online if you search for the tarmac. Um, there's also plenty of pictures of it, so I'm not gonna do a great job of focusing on the bike. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen pictures and seen reviews and seen all the pretty stuff out there. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna actually give you guys an honest review of the bicycle, um, what I think about it, um, what I, how I actually feel about it. Um, I will also say that I'm not, I wasn't given anything by Specialized. You know, they don't even sell online. So, I mean, there's no, there's no way I can make any money off this. I'm just telling you guys uh, what I feel about this bike. A um, little background on me, if you're just clicking on this video. Uh, well, if you're just clicking on this video, go check out all my other videos, you know, after the fact or before this, for that matter. You can kind of see my riding style. And to give you a little background, uh, on the bikes I've ridden, uh, I'm lucky enough to work at a really high-end bike shop here in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I have had the privilege of riding the newest bikes from BMC, Pinarello, Scott, um, I'm probably forgetting some. And I'm also a long-term, long-time uh, Tarmac rider um, coming off the SL5 uh, Tarmac. I had three of those, including pro level frames. Um, so very familiar with the changes this bike received and not just on paper, but I'm gonna try to convey to you what those changes uh, are. And if you're out there right now and you're thinking about upgrading from your SL5 to the SL6, what you can expect. Um, I can also give you a little bit of a comparison from the F10, F8 to the uh, Tarmac uh, SL6, because I've ridden both of those bikes, uh, as well as a Scott Foil. Um, that's kind of my background. I've not ridden the Trek offerings or the Giant offerings, so um, I can't really compare them. I'm not gonna attempt to. Uh, you know, I'm sure there'll be some guys in the comments, some fanboys from either of those uh, manufacturers telling me how great they are, and look, they probably are great. Today we're talking about the Tarmac, and I can only compare them to what I can compare them to. So, uh, let's get underway. First of all, the Tarmac uh, received massive changes. It was a complete overhaul for 2018, uh, brand new frame, uh, totally uh, all new tubing. Um, they, they rebuilt the bike, you know, as happens, I wanna say every four years-ish. I don't know, to be honest with you. But uh, it needed it. The old Tarmac I thought was a little heavy and uh, possibly a little too stiff, if there is such a thing. It was a hard bike, speaking towards the SL5, the SL5 was a hard bike to ride longer than say like an hour. After an hour, hour and a half, it kind of just beats you up and you know, your lower back, my shoulders and my butt. I mean, it was just a very stiff bike uh, to be seated on for a long time, um, you know. And it also, uh, the older bike uh, was a little twitchy in the steering, I thought, even for a guy that crit races, that likes really fast steering. Uh, and really stiff head tubes. I really like a stiff uh, head tube, fork interface, stem interface. Um, as you see here, I'm running, um, it's probably not focus, but for those of you that know my channel, know I run the Zip uh, SL Sprint stem. Um, I just like the interface of everything, including the bars, you know, to be really stiff um, through the front and through your pedals. I feel contact points should be extremely stiff. That's That's, you know, how power is transferred, period. So um, the other bike, it was stiff, but so stiff that, well, it was stiff, but stiff to a point where it would want to just twitch all over the place. Really, really quick steering. So little input did a lot to the bike. Um, so those are two faults of the SL5 that I really didn't like. Um, and this bike, it fixed them. Uh, switching to the seat stays, uh, down low, like the other manufacturers have already been doing, I will admit, Specialized was a little late to that game, uh, at least with the Tarmac. Um, switching to these seat stays and uh, the D shape on the seat post, 
has really changed the compliance of the bike. Uh, the seat is almost so soft that at, when I first rode it, I thought something was broken in the seat because it was like, um, it was almost so spongy that it was bouncing. Uh, but it actually makes for a very nice ride kind of once you get over that weird feeling if you're coming off the SL5. Uh, but it makes for a very, very comfortable ride. And what these stays do, and you know, I think is very important, is they don't take away from the power transfer that these bikes are known for. The reason I love the Tarmac over like the Pinarello and the Scott and the BMC is just the beautiful transfer, the lateral stiffness of the bike, how well it moves you forward. And they didn't lose any of that. You know, they went to a FAC 12 carbon, which to me means they probably had to use a higher grade carbon in certain areas uh, because there's less material also. So they went to this FAC 12 uh, material and then they reduced the size of the tubing everywhere, which, um, you know, just lightened the frame up. This frame also got a lot lighter. It's not as big a deal to me. Bikes are super light anyway, but this frame did get a little lighter. I think. Um, uh, with the power meter, which I'll talk about in a second, this bike ended up weighing power meter and, and this big stem, the stem super heavy. I think I was still in the 14 pound range. So really light bike now, um, on par with some of the lighter stuff like giant and Scott both have really light bikes as far as I know. Uh, but I kind of skipped ahead there. So, uh, the power transfer is still, I would say equal to the SL five. I don't feel like it got any better. Um, but I, I think it's the same and being the same while adding more compliance in your butt and getting rid of, now here we go. Here's the big part, getting rid of the twitchiness in the front end of this bike. Um, that's huge because we didn't need any stiffer bottom bracket. That was perfect. We just need those other two things addressed. So steering, uh, same thing that's been addressed still just as stiff of interface. I don't feel any flex in the front end, uh, when I'm sprinting, wrenching on the bars, um, same, but it's not as twitchy. So small inputs don't, don't jerk the bike back and forth. It's a little smoother, huge improvement there. So they basically addressed, in my opinion, the two big issues with the SL five. They kept the things I liked about the SL five. I can't say enough good things about this bike. I love it. It is the best bike I've ever ridden. Um, to touch quick on geometry, just so you guys know, uh, you know what I had to do differently. Um, from the SL5 to the SL6, the answer is absolutely nothing. I did the exact same things. If you notice on my bike, which you might not have seen yet, this is a zero offset post for the SL6. Um, they are available. If you need one, you need to contact a dealer. Uh, they're not actually listed on the website, I don't believe yet, but a dealer can order you one. Um, and I am a zero offset guy, short femur. So my old bikes, I ran zero offset posts, new bike ran zero offset posts, running the same amount of setback. I think I'm seven setback. I'm 78.5 millimeter seat height. That's from center of the bottom bracket to the top of the seat. Uh, and I run a 120 negative 12 zip SL sprint stem. Um, these are specialized bars. I prefer the, um, I prefer the Easton handlebars. I like the flare. I like that the, I like the top. Is that focusing? I like that the tops of the Eastons are, you know, 40s and then 42s. I like the flare, but uh, this does have the bar end DI2 uh, port, which I guess now is a good time. We'll segue into that. So this bike is the complete bike that you buy offline, and it comes with the new Shimano DI2, which I think is 9150, 9170. I don't know. New DI2, um, and that's why I'm running the specialized handlebar because it has the bar and plug, and this bar actually has a hole in the end of the bar for the wires to go in. Easton's bar does not. So Easton, if you're listening, put a hole in your handlebar. Uh, this bike is equipped with uh, CLX 50s. It came from the factory with those and that is actually my preferred wheel. If you guys have watched my videos for long enough, you know that I have ridden the CLX 64s as well as the CLX 32s. I like the 50s. And here's my unbiased reasoning for this. They combine the best looks and the best performance. If you want the best performance, in my opinion, the wheel you should buy is the CLX32. Nobody in this on this planet needs CLX64s. And I bought the CLX50s. I prefer the CLX50s because they just look cooler than the 32s. So sue me. I like I like the look of them. But if you're if you're gonna purchase wheels, purchase the CLX32s. If you're building this frame up or whatever it is. 
or you're thinking about upgrading one of your bikes um, to something in this video, uh, buy the Steel XR2s. Right, Again, I don't work for Specialized. I'm not gonna make a dime off saying that. I just think they're the best wheel. Uh, I'm running the, I took the Turbo Cottons off. I don't train on the cotton wall tires. They just, uh, they're prone to flats a little too much here in the desert. Um, so these are the, uh, the turbos, but non-cottons, 26. This bike will fit 28s. That's a new change. This bike will fit 28s uh, if you guys want to run 28s, which, why not? I like 26s, but run 28s. They'll be a lot more comfortable if you're looking for compliance. Quick commercial brake. Braking, it does have, uh, as you guys know, I'm just talking about stuff you know, but I'm going to talk about what I feel about it. So it does have the new uh, direct mount uh, calipers. Um, honestly, they don't make a difference. Here's the deal, if you're on a carbon clincher, then you know that braking just sucks. These brakes didn't change that fact. So yeah, they stay in adjustment a little longer, that's probably their only benefit, but otherwise, braking to me is exactly the same. If you guys want better braking, uh, wait, it's, we're in January now, they're saying late January, February for the disc bike, just buy the disc bike, if you guys are interested in stopping. Or if you guys live in a wet climate, or if you, uh, you know, live in the Alps or something, buy the disc bike. Or if you're a big guy. Gearing, I am running the sub, uh, not sub, mid-compact gearing, 5236. That's what comes on the bike. Um, and then I prefer an 1125 in the back because we're pretty flat around here. I don't feel a need for a 28 really for anything. And it just gives me a little bit better ratios, a little bit better, tighter spread as I shift gears. Um, so I switched that out, that's a preference thing. Uh, but uh, the 1128 is probably what I would recommend to everybody. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions on the bike, ask me. Ask me in the comments below. I will have. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm working on T-shirts, guys. I'm working on some Cycling Virgin T-shirts. Uh, they'll be black. They'll be white lettering. It'll just say Cycling Virgin on them. I'm working on that, and I'm gonna have them up on the website. That's right. I made a website uh, for 2018 in CyclingVirgin.com. There'll be a link down below as well. Um, and there'll be a shop button on there. Uh, check it out. It'd be a very limited run of shirts coming. I'm, I'm dropping this at the end of a video because my diehard fans are gonna, they're gonna pick up on this. So it's a very limited run of shirts because I have to buy them all, right? So I bought a small batch. Don't miss out. Um, when they go live, I'll post a link. I'll post a link on Instagram and Facebook when they go live. And then a video will probably come out like a couple days later talking about their shirts. So uh, be on the lookout for that. That's it. Hope you guys liked the review of the SL6 Tarmac. Now go out there and make your own adventure happen, guys. Go do it right now. Get off the couch. Go ride your bicycle. Talk to you next time.